Hello and welcome to God's View. We're so glad you joined us today. Please remember to call those prayer lines at the bottom of the screen. Uh, listen, we are hearing all kinds of great things on the prayer lines, and it helps us also to know what mm -hmm. God is doing through God's View. It's He's doing amazing things through the show, and we are so glad to just come on every single time and be able to share the gospel with you. And we're all encouraged. It's just so fun to join together and do media. It really, really is. Uh, at, at, on one hand, it's a little scary because it's, you know, it's a fear of the Lord because he has entrusted so many people <laughs> into mm -hmm. us when we, when we speak. But we try our best to do everything the Holy Spirit says, and he counts us perfect along the way. Are we perfect? A perfect, excuse me, absolutely not. But, you know, we're having a, a great, great time uh, just surrendering and doing what God's called us to do mm -hmm. by doing this show called God's View, because it's his view. It's, it's not about us. It's God's view coming to you uh, the best way that we can deliver it by the Holy Spirit. And so, with that said, welcome, welcome to God's View. I'm Charlene back to Marion, one of your God's View hosts, Priscilla Pruitt, Lana Gardner, and our special guest host that has been with us the last few weeks. And today, we're going to kind of be slash interview, uh, whatever. We're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. with Sean. A mm -hmm. little bit of testimony. And you want to call your husbands. You want to tell men to tune in. Yes. Because Sean has a lot to say. See, uh, I, I always call it what it is because when you speak, Speak something into somebody's life or over their life pretty soon they're so walking in that thing and me as a prophetic person I'm really accountable to speak those things so I'm going to tell you what Sean is he's an evangelist apostolic prophet and so he he has a lot of things to share that is really with illumination and that goes in and really imparts things to people because the uh, apostolic anointing establishes things mm -hmm. in your life and so it's 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 not to be taken lightly because there can be some things really established in your life today if you want to take to heart what God has brought this gift today in the fivefold to impart to you and it will activate you and it will stir you up to do the things of God and walk in your call and be a better uh, husband, be mm -hmm. a better man of Amen. God, be a better father. There's going to be a lot of things I believe that God is going to get done in this next 28 minutes. So Sean, just tell them, you know, for the uh, viewers that have just tuned in, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of tell them who you are and you're you're married, and and then let's just let's yeah, just tell me the about Holy your wife. Spirit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell us about your wife. Yeah. Sitting with you. <laughs> well, I'm a walking, talking example of God's grace. Hallelujah. I've been as low as you can be. I've been in situations where I was in an apartment by myself. My ex-wife was cheating on me. Mm -hmm. My two-year-old little girl, which was my world, was taken from me Ugh. for absolutely no reason. My life was destroyed. Oh, and here mm -hmm. I am with the most beautiful woman in the world, beautiful <laughs> children, and as happy as I can be. Wow. And it's all because of the power of God. God. And I just feel in my heart that, you know, especially the men, if they get on here and start listening, if I start talking about things they're not interested in and words that just kind of go off like this, I know you want to talk about finances, but there are some things that you have to deal with. At the height of my game in 2018, every man wants to succeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all want to make the billions. Mm -hmm. Some are just the millions. I wanted mm -hmm. billions. <laughs> and God blessed me tremendously in 2008. It was the most financial successful time of our lives. But guess what? When the money started flowing, the pride came with that. Mm -hmm. And pride always comes before the fall. Mm -hmm. But, you know, God is so gracious and so merciful. He comes to us and he tells us our pitfalls. He tells us yes. the areas that That's we good, need Sean. to work on. Yes. And I, had, I have a Bible verse here. This is a little extreme, but in 2 Kings 20, verse 1, In those days Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die. You mm. shall not recover. See, if you don't get your house in order, mm -hmm. if you aren't 
being the spouse you should be. If you're not taking the time with your children, God can, your wife. how can God bless that? Because mm -hmm. if you're here and you want to be here, all of those problems are just going to be amplified, and money only mm -hmm. makes things worse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. It always does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure if you want to add to that. I can just keep rolling. No, you you just Go roll. Ahead. But I had this moment where you know it, it was a vicious cycle. I'd be up, and then I'd fall. I'd be up, and then I'd fall. But each time I fell, God taught me something new. You mean financially? Um, every, every area, every, area. any area, every, every any area. area, yeah. The and whole life is like that, you know. Yeah, it's, it's valleys, peaks and, and valleys, mm -hmm. peaks yeah. and valleys. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the the peak of it for for me and my wife was when we were in Newcastle. We ran a ministry for six years for a youth group, we're, and we we're very successful at it. But uh, a lot of churches came against us. Why? Uh, because when you're doing the, the kingdom work and lives are changing, the enemy comes to try to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. But we were really wounded and attacked. And during that time, um, we were so focused on ministry, on trying to make a living, that me and Priscilla kind of like, boop, like this. And she was Mrs. International. She was traveling the world. And so I found that because of my pride, not willing to, to, to let things go. God had to just break through that pride and he allowed mm -hmm. me to fall. Because when you're pride, you don't listen to your wife. No. You're like, man, I, I provide. I don't need to do that little stuff. Wow, that's good. And the wife is over here like, I just want him to build this thing for me. I want to make a coffee bar. I want him to do this for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and all I hear is like, blah, blah, blah. But if I was... Um, walking in love and not in pride, like, hey, I'm the man. I made, I make the money. I bring home mm -hmm. the bacon. Mm -hmm. I would listen to her heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so she perceived, perceived that as not love. Mm -hmm. And so I just the, want a coffee bar. So it's little things <laughs> yeah. like that yes, that men we don't pick up on. No. And so when I fell on my face because finances mm -hmm. got really tight there for a second, I'm like, God, where are you at? I'm tithing. I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And God was like, okay, you ready to listen now? Mm. You God, <laughs> God shrinks his back. Mm -hmm. He prunes the tree. What's the Bible verse? <laughs> oh, I put on the spot. I put him on the spot. Oh, yeah, but he prunes it. He prunes us. He prunes us. He prunes us. Those yeah, he loves, he prunes. And yeah. so, and John, mm -hmm. God showed me. He's like, hey, you got a problem with pride, and we need to deal with this thing. And I'm like, I don't have a problem with pride, <laughs> but I did. <laughs> but the moment pride comes before the fall. Yes. See, in order for for mm -hmm. Jesus to come in and guide our lives. See, Jesus is the only reason we have any kind of blessing in our life. Oh, yeah. Priscilla, I had to remind myself that she was a gift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to remind myself that being on this TV set, this is a gift. Mm -hmm. It's not because of my talents. Nope. It's because God opened up a door. My success in the oil business purely comes from the favor of God. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But the moment you start saying, yep, that's me, this is me, yep, look at me, that's when God's like, Jesus is like, you could have pride in your heart or you could have mm -hmm. Jesus in your heart, but you can't have both. Mm -hmm. they, they don't hang out together. Yeah. Jesus is like, get behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. Get behind me, Sean. You know, yeah. I'm over here. I'm waiting for you to come back to me. And so once I realized that, mm -hmm. once I just totally let go of myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then it's amazing what God does. Well, amazing. you know what? I want to give the audience, you know, all of our viewers, the scripture that you were talking about, about pruning, because you looked at all of us and we go, oh, oh <laughs> You know, but I knew it was in John, but I just, we just want to give it to him. John 15, 2, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. It's good. Um, uh, let me see. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that yeah. it will be even more fruitful. And that is so powerful. Mm -hmm. It is. It's out of love. He's only doing it out of love. And, exactly. And when he prunes that man, and, and then when he cuts off every branch that's not producing, Amen. that's a good thing for us and for the men out there, what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Because when he prunes that, then we're going to be even more fruitful. Exactly. It's awesome. And awesome what he was scripture. saying was reminding me of the scripture where it says in Luke, 
I believe it's Luke 6, 9, where it says, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole oh, world, wow. but lose his soul? I mean, mm-hmm. what does it profit? He says, you know, he was chasing wealth. He was chasing riches. He was chasing, you know, to have this uh, company that was successful and have all this fame and fortune, basically, because mm-hmm. he's, he That's was true. well known. But he was losing his soul. He was losing his family. He was yeah. losing his relationship with his wife. And, you know, me, I'm talking to myself in the third person, but, you know, it, it didn't profit him anything because his relationship with God and everything else was, although he looked like he was up here to the world, his whole life was just declining. Mm-hmm. It says in the word, you prosper as your soul prospers. Exactly. Yeah. It all starts in your relationship with God. And I was yep. reminded that when I was alone in that apartment, when I was Ooh. broken, when I had nothing, and Priscilla came in, God blessed me with her, and love was able to flourish in my heart. Mm-hmm. And when you have love in your heart, mm-hmm. you just grow. Mm-hmm. And it, it, you know, we we want to car- uh, compartmentalize everything. We're like, okay, my job brings money. You know, my wife gives me this. My kids give me this. Churches and my this. church gives me this. Mm-hmm. No, it's one massive seed of love from God and outbursts Everything your beautiful else. spouse, your, your your beautiful job, your calling, your beautiful family, the love and the unity. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't have, if your house, what was it that I said? If your house is in disorder, yes, if you're not yes, spending that time not, with your children, if you're, if you're not yeah. doing the things you that your wife wants you to do, if you're not spending that time with God, it's not like God's like, oh, I'm going to curse you. No, your 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 garden is not flourishing. Yeah. And you know the well, irony you, in that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. Go, no, go ahead. And, and the I'll irony right. irony in that is that his scripture for our company is called Kingdom Exploration, and the scripture was uh, Matthew six twenty eight thirty three thirty three six thirty three, where it says, um, "Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all oh, these things will be added." Yeah. But the funny thing oh. is, ironically, we weren't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh too hard. <laughs> but you, yeah. it was God saying, yes. you know, look, mm-hmm. if you're going to put this out there, I'm going to make sure that you're walking the walk. You're not yeah, just talk, talking talk the talk. That's yes. good for self. It is good. And you know, you were addressing all all the pride and and what it does do, you know, because in the Bible, it really does says pride comes before destruction. So mm-hmm. you have pride and then it starts destroying in your household. It and then it says a haughty spirit comes before yeah. a fall. So mm-hmm. you're going to get a bunch of pride in your life, men. And then you're going to say, like you said, I don't have to do this for my, you know, I don't have to do this. I'm the yeah, man yeah. that brings up the bacon and, yeah. and she could do this or she could do that. But out of love... When you do that, then everything just starts flowing yes, so, so much true. better. Good but right when you're pride, then it starts destroying mm-hmm. you a little bit. And then you get all haughty, and it's a fall because pride comes before destruction, haughty spirit before mm-hmm. the fall. Because mm-hmm. you get all haughty, like, I don't have, you know, I'm, I'm the, mm-hmm. like you said, the man with the bacon. So and it's me. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And, and. Your wives have so many needs, and like you said, just so, just setting up a little thing for them, what it does, mm-hmm. what what it brings, the happiness. It's the it smallest brings. thing sometimes. Yes. You know, and 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 here's the here's the other thing about men. Um, not only is a pride a major issue, but also what they do for a living is their identity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Their provision. Your your provision is not your identity. That's not who you are. Mm-hmm. And I went through a season, and 2010 was the worst financial year of our lives. We tried mm-hmm. to make it after 2009 when the financial markets crashed. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyways, when I didn't have my finances, I felt like a loser. You had mm-hmm. no identity. You didn't know I who really you were. Did. I remember. I felt like such a loser, but that's such a lie. I didn't even know such him. Such a lie. I'm telling you, he became a different person. It wasn't Sean's mm-hmm. outgoing. He is more yeah. of a social butterfly than I am. He yeah. is, I mean, I'm serious. He has to tell me sometimes, honey, go socialize. Because I can tend to be a little more introvert. Mm-hmm. And he is such a social person. But at that moment when all that happened, he had lost his identity. And he was just like, like this. I mean, it was just like. In that sad? It was gone. He was like in a trance. Yeah. And he didn't know what to do. I want to address that because there was two ladies just the other day, and they, when they go over and travel overseas, which I have been, and, you know, we've ministered over there, the thing is, is, um, you know, many of them just have nothing. I mean, just have nothing. nothing. They just have a little hot dirt, nothing, and they're trying to get food to boil bones just to have something to eat off the side of the road. And the thing is, is what's really sad is they asked these two ladies, they said, how do you guys in America serve God? 
Mm-hmm. How do you even, you know, I, I, because, and they go, what do you mean? We, we love God. We serve God. And they said, because you have everything. You don't even need God. And wow. what happens is, wow. is that's a good point. Then we throw away God because we aren't, you know, our business isn't doing what we thought it would do yeah. or we, they're right. We, 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 all these things is what are, what we get attached to and identities. And if you we're not it. prospering right. and if we don't have the right amount of money and if we don't have the right car, we call that lesser with God or God's not answering well, prayer. You blame when him. They have nothing Amen. and they serve him. Nothing and they serve him. So that's true faith. Yes. And you know, the key but to all this. true faith too. Yeah, when and she says walk, that, yeah, when you have and you yeah. serve him. Yes. yes. It, yes. You know, because it is. Of course, we all need him. Amen. You know, in the end, but, we all need eternal but life. But as long as you don't blame him because of the circumstances, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's a whole yeah. different. You know, yeah. What I found when I fell on my face, I found that my identity had been hijacked. Because the world has an identity exactly. for you. But yes. God has a greater mm-hmm. identity mm-hmm. for that's you. That's true. And your identity is in Christ. You're calling fits you like a glove. Yeah. When you are at a job just to make ends meet, that's not a life to mm-hmm. live. No. Mm-hmm. That's not the life God has called you to. And Hallelujah. I remember like it was yesterday, we were in Roanoke and we're at our house in Roanoke. And Roanoke, I was Texas. like, God, where are you at in our finances? I mean, we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're barely able to pay our mortgage right now. Mm-hmm. And I remember like it was yesterday, God said, let's go for a walk. And he took me to the woods, and I started walking with him. I saw visions. I'm not the kind of guy that says, "Well, I saw an angel yesterday." Ooh, I saw yeah. angels. <laughs> awesome. I saw. I spent. I spent That's three funny. to six hours a day, hours that I should have been on the phone working, mm-hmm. but I chose to spend time with God. And you know what? Not only did I prosper financially better than I've ever been before, mm-hmm. but God showed me who I was. I had a better relationship with my wife with my children. I had order in my house. I was more fulfilled and I was walking in the fulfillment of Christ. Mm. See, the lie that the enemy says is you need to sit on that. uh, You need to work for eight, 10 hours a day. Otherwise, you're going to be broke. That is such a lie. Mm -hmm. And the other thing the enemy says, hey, you're going to go broke following Jesus. What? I know. That's a big one. Billy Graham died with $25 million in his bank. Okay. And he saved more souls than any man on this planet. And he was he never not? boastful about his money. He was such Ever. a humble yeah. man. Very humble. He helped David, more people. Abraham. Yes, uh, all of them were very mm-hmm. wealthy. Yes, he wealthy. was. He, Abraham was very rich in silver and cattle and gold. And he, the his, his uh, servant, made it very clear. My master was made wealthy by his God. It was very clear that God made him rich. But if you don't follow what God has for you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're going to fall on your face and you're always going to be hustling for that dollar yeah. and you're going to miss out on the greatest blessing. Yes. And that's your family. Because money can't dictate mm-hmm. all of that. It can't. And if we lose it or we're in, uh, going through a thing like, like this gal that just keeps saying amen and she's really having a great time with, with everything that you're saying right now and her husband and her lost 10000 a month income and she said her husband lost his identity. And so what you're saying mm-hmm. is really, it's really so helping true. people. And we yes. have got to get to the point where like Paul, you, you're yep. going to bless him with nothing, you're gonna. He, he was content with all yes. and with nothing. And mm-hmm. Americans, I don't care how much they want to shove it under the rug or say, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Uh, you know, I bless God, I'm okay. You know what? They have an issue with it because mm-hmm. when they lose something, they start saying, Amen. "What are you doing, God? I mean, why is my money crazy it's this this month?" You start saying, "I tithe." Right yeah. there, Amen. you have an issue. I tithe. Why? Why? Why isn't it here? Amen. You know, because. We have issues. <laughs> you know so what, how, I mean? what is your heart condition issues. when you're tithing, though? Well, are you tithing exactly. grudgingly? Are you tithing because you're like, Ugh, I have to do this. The Word of God says it. Here yeah. you go. But are you tithing with a joyful heart? You know what, yes. God? Thank you, Lord. You gave yes. me this money. You, promoted, you provided yes. for my family. I am so happy that I get to give to you. You know, that heart condition, yeah. that's what makes the difference. God sees the heart. He's not seeing, like, the action. Mm-hmm. It's not about the action. It's yeah. about the trust, the faith, and the joy to give. It's that's a joy right. to get to give yes. to God. Yes. yes. Not only that, though, when you do give to God, you know, with all of your heart, then the blessings that come, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Mm-hmm. So it's no longer mm-hmm. 10%, it's 20%. Yeah, mm-hmm. you get, yes, yeah, yes, yes. yeah. That's true. Yeah. You can't out give God. So, Amen. You never so on, on uh, most of the men that are out there, you know, uh, right now, um, Sean, like, 
you've had so many ups and downs, even with the call of God on your life. And like you had said something um, earlier mm -hmm. on a, a video that you had shared on Facebook. I didn't get to watch the whole thing, mm -hmm. but about how many times you're up and down and you're up and down, it's getting back up. Yeah. You know, what can you say to encourage them? Like, because men, they're, they're so much harder on <clears throat> themselves because you guys are such caregivers. You want to give us everything. Yeah. I know my husband, he wants to give me everything. I mean, when I go into a store, you know, I, I wear a different style. Like I wear a lot of long stuff because I'm mm -hmm. tall and I can only find those certain sequin things at certain places and or a certain top. And I'll say, oh, I love that. I'll never find that again. Then you ought to get every color. That's God, honey. Aww. That's God. Amen. No, no. <laughs> yeah, but, to find a man like that, yes, it is. But he... That because he loves you. Wow. He loves me. And and you know, uh, you guys just nature just so want to care for us. And so mm -hmm. want to nurture us and take care of us. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's it really crushes your identity, really yeah, hurts your pride and mm -hmm. everything when you can't do that. It's yeah. true. You know, and so so by what you're sharing with them and everything that you're saying, you know, you did momentarily lose your identity, but you learned that. You can never do that again because Amen. it doesn't matter if you have it or you don't. It's Christ, the hope of glory in Amen. you. And you don't lose that just because you've lost some material thing because he's going to restore mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, He's going to restore it. But we can't lose our identity and all that and just say, oh, well, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, because we lose funding. But how can you know? I mean. What can you say to the guys? Like, like, I mean, what did it make you feel like? Mm -hmm. like, like, you know, it, if you go by the world standards, it's, you just feel like garbage. Mm. But our wives, they need love more than anything. And a replacement of love is things of this Ooh, world. Oh, yeah. But at the end of the day, when you give the wife or give your wife the love that she deserves... Um, they're fulfilled in a way that they just don't care anymore. And I believe the lie, hook, line, and sinker, mm -hmm. if I'm not yeah. able to buy my wife the best, then she's not going to love me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is such a lie by the enemy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so many of us, we rely so much on our finances. But our finances can't save us. There are politicians, there are billionaires today that... Are going to prison. There, there are people in Saudi Arabia that they're billionaires. Mm -hmm. They live in palaces. They have thousands of cars that you could would never dream of owning, and they're in prison, rotting away. Their money could not save them. Mm -hmm. yes. Once you get in your mind that mm -hmm. money can't, can't save, save you, your job can't save you. You need to let yes. go. Stop struggling, because mm -hmm. God. God is a God of rest, mm -hmm. and he's also a God of restoration. So when something rises up against you, praise God, because that's part of the deal. Mm -hmm. When we walk by faith, the enemy always rises up with a lie. Yes. But I guess a, a word wouldn't be trick, but a part of that deal is you have to to see it for what it is. Well, yes. And you know what, Sean? This is so good. You're reminding me of this when... When men do that, what you're saying, and you start, because as the head of the household, you know, things come from the head down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you do that, the Lord just brought this to me. When, when you guys do that and really want to give us all the things of the world, per se, then you set us up to live this lifestyle Amen. and this lie. And then that woman gets devastated, loses her identity, and wants yes. to mess all this because you're really setting them up for, you know, and and are they right for you know all that kind of stuff? It's not all your fault. Right. You know, you're See, it's setting them like up. a yeah. form of gluttony and a form yeah. of idolatry. Because you got because you, you got want messed more. up too. Because mm -hmm. you was accustomed to that lifestyle, and then when you lost it, it you was easier to for me yeah. because even when I had that kind of money, I was still shopping like TJ Maxx. I was still very frugal. Yeah, but because yeah. I grew up like that, so it was easier for me than yeah. it was for him. He's also a man. Yeah, but I do. Oh, yeah, <laughs> thank God. Yeah, he is a man. I can, I can attest to that. Uh, but um, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> well, you no, well, you know what? No, I mean, I, I had to have the, I had to have the Corvette. I had to have the Camaro. I had to have the boat. I had to have the big house and the wine cabinets and all the. Yeah. Oh, what I was going to say, though, is it, it comes with idolatry and gluttony. Yeah. And it wasn't until he started walking with God and started really seeking and having a relationship with God that he discovered 
Yes. His call and his purpose in life. Amen. And that's when God called us to Wyoming. It was at that time. Oh, that's awesome. And because he was listening, go ahead and you take over because that's your story. <laughs> well, we don't have much time left, but. Yeah, but go for it. The go last it. couple we got. You know, she'll hold that two minutes up and then we are going to. The moment, the moment I had that time with God in the woods and it was for what? 11 months. It was a long time. Yeah. It was 11 months of me just seeking God out. Hours. And sometimes I would day. be there out there for like seven, eight hours mm -hmm. by myself in the woods, just talking with him. There was, was times a... where I'd be like, what are you doing out there? <laughs> <laughs> but it, Can't you marry no. <laughs> I did. You know what? I made more money in the woods with Jesus than I did sitting Amen. in that office Amen. stressed out and worried Amen. about my bills like every Amen. other man. But then shortly after, 12 months later from the first time God took me to the woods, we were in Wyoming mm -hmm. saving lives. Yep, exactly. Yeah, they brought us here. God. And that five years in, in, mm -hmm. in Newcastle, Wyoming, uh, hanging out with, with teenagers and helping them <laughs> through life, that was the greatest time of my life. Uh -huh. And yeah. I overcame some fears. I didn't like talking in front of people. In Can case you, you don't that? know what he's talking oh about. My. Sean was afraid he to become, God called us now. to Wyoming. He became a youth, we became youth pastors and started an outreach in Wyoming in the number one capital of suicides at that time. And so that's what he's referring to. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh I you can't know, believe it. This it's went too fast. We've got to go. I'm oh, right sorry. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, uh, this is unbelievable. This went so fast. That was so I good. Did. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna have to do another show on it because it really, it, there's yeah. so much to say that he has within him to share in the, you know, as you know, God uses his gifts and mm -hmm. he has a great gift in the prophetic. And we are going to be doing a ministry show really soon, and uh, he'll be ministering on that too because he's going to join us for that. Um, now that you know, Sean might be doing quite a bit of hosting with us we're anyways we, we're going to have some guest hosts in that seat for a while but anyways please if you don't know jesus please Amen. please please it'd be the best thing you ever do you know we we uh have these shows so that you'll know jesus and god is bringing many to the lord through god's view i don't know how many we, we won't even know until we get to heaven mm -hmm. and uh but if you don't know him, it's so easy. He made it so easy. He just said, ask. He just said, believe. He said, just say, forgive me of my sins. Uh, confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. Let those two merge and you will be saved. He said, everyone who calls on my name will be saved. Yeah. Everyone who calls mm -hmm. on the name of the Lord will be saved. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter where you are, what you've done, how bad you think you are. He died while you were yet still a sinner. And if mm -hmm. you said that prayer today, all you got to do is have said that prayer and ask him to forgive you of your sins coming to you your life, be the Lord of your life, take over, and call those prayer lines mm -hmm. if you did that. 307-637-PRAY so we can rejoice with you and pray with you on the phone. We're seeing such great things on the prayer line. Then go to our website, please, today, I'm telling you, we, you, you know we've been on the air 10 years. Do we ask you for money? Never. We need your help now so that we can keep coming into your home and going around the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can go donate at our website. We have to switch over. And we have a HD. miracle. HD. We, yes. we only need like 17,000 more dollars. It's awesome. So Please do it today. We love you. We got to go. And you can watch iPhone Droids free. Download the app. We love you. Jesus loves you more 